All right, now the hip joint. We'll describe the hip joint, including its osteology, ligaments, and its movements. So here we have uh, the hip joint. It's a synovial ball and socket joint where the ball is formed by the head of the femur, which articulates with the socket, which is the acetabulum, and together they make this freely moving synovial joint. Recognize that that acetabulum is quite deep and can contrast to the glenoid cavity in the um, shoulder joint. This acetabulum provides far more uh, stability. Uh, it's just less um, flexible. Uh, the hip joint, if we now take a coronal section through that right hip, let's take a, we'll notice that the hip joint is in its synovial con construct is similar to other synovial joints. It has this joint capsule, which is this dense, irregular, collagenous connective tissue uh, that is really the extension of the periosteum from the um, os coxa and continuous with the periosteum on the femur. And within this joint capsule is a coronal section, so you just see it at the top and the bottom, but it surrounds the entire circumference of this hip joint. With inside the hip joint, lining the inside of the acetabulum, is the labrum made of uh, fibrous cartilage. And the acetabular labrum helps to increase the concavity and the geography of the socket to help provide more stability. Also around surrounding um, this head of the femur, we see this articular cartilage, hyaline cartilage, that helps to absorb shock and give uh, uh, some leeway in, um, in absorption. Um, the joint cavity, which is the space within filled with synovial fluid that, that uh, lubricates and guides this hip joint, and then this round ligament that comes from the fovea from the head of the femur, this is sometimes called the ligamentum teres of the femur, uh, helps to give support to uh, this hip joint, especially when uh, the hip is flexed and laterally rotated, is not as significant as we age. To help further give stability to this hip joint, surrounding that joint capsule are three ligaments. Uh, named for their bony attachment. The first is the iliofemoral ligament coursing from the ilium to the proximal femur. Ischiofemoral ligament that courses, it's more posteriorly located, goes from the ischium to the femur. And the pubofemoral ligament that courses from the pubis to the femur, also more anteriorly located. And together, these three ligaments help to stabilize the hip joint and limit hyperextension. How do they do that? Well, let's take a look at this hip joint analogy. Uh, where two discs are linked by parallel ligament fibers, where one of the discs represented is the acetabulum, the other one is the femoral head, and those red lines are representing these capsular ligaments. And so when one disc, the head of the femur, rotates relative to the other disc, the acetabulum, the fibers of the capsular ligaments become increasingly oblique and tight and draw those two discs together. Now, when we place that analogy onto the real hip joint with those real capsular ligaments, observe what happens now when you, ex when you extend that hip joint. You see how the femur is drawn closer to the acetabulum. When the hip joint is in a flexed position, as the picture demonstrates, the capsular ligaments are parallel to each other. When the hip joint is extended, or extension of the hip joint rotates the femur relative to the acetabulum and tightens the fibers of the capsular ligaments in that fashion. So this results then in increasing joint stability. When you extend the hip, it pulls that head of the femur into the acetabulum and it helps to resist hyperextension. So your hip is actually more loose in a flex position than when an extended position. Uh, the movements of this synovial hip joint are as follows. First is flexion. Flexion is moving the femur or your thigh forward, as in lifting your knee off the ground. The primary muscles that will flex your hip are your iliopsoas musculature, a little bit from the rectus femoris, and this is primarily your L2 myotome. Uh, extension is when you move the thigh, uh, when you return the thigh back to the ground. Um, we're increasing it to 180 degrees. The hyperextension is limited by our capsule, uh, by the ligaments of the uh, hip joint. Primary muscles will do this are the gluteus maximus when your hip is already flexed and the hamstrings as if in a normal gait and, wa and walking. Now, abduction of the hip joint is moving the femur away from the midline. And the primary muscles that will abduct the hip joint are the gluteus medius and minimus. Adduction of the hip joint is uh, primarily uh, 
accomplished by our medial compartment thigh muscles, adductor longus, brevis, magnus, and our gracilis muscles. Uh, internal rotation is, is, we only have a couple of muscles, the gluteus, medius, and minimus help with this, uh, but we don't have a lot of internal rotators because when you're walking, the whole physics of gait help with uh, the, this internal rotation without having to have a lot of muscle support. External rotation uh, is then pivoting the, the femur out, or also called lateral rotation of the hip. And this is primarily accomplished by our deep hip rotator muscles. And we do this one more time from a superior view and focusing on that right uh, limb. When you see your toe tapping side to side with internal rotation and external rotation, it looks like it's maybe a, a joint in the ankle that would do this, but it's really these external rotators of the hip that are then moving the head of the femur and the acetabulum, which then results in your toe pointing in different directions.